some very cool new Aptera specs that I felt like were completely thrown under the radar. Originally heard in an interview with the CEO Chris Anthony from Bearded Tesla Guy. Great channel, I highly recommend you watch his full video, he got to check out the Gamma prototype in person. But a big question a lot of people have definitely had with the Aptera anytime they mention they want to do a 600 mile range or get the one I reserved, a 1000 mile range electric vehicle. Like that is just insane. How is Aptera going to be able to fit a battery pack large enough to go a thousand miles in a vehicle that looks like the Aptera? Well, for one, I try to remind people that while it may look unique and different, and yes, it is a two-seater, it is by no means a small vehicle. It's about the size of a Model 3. And then once you factor in for those wheel pants, it's actually wider than a lot of pickup trucks. So for one, they have a lot of space underneath where the passengers are sitting to store a big battery pack, but they hadn't gone into a lot of detail on what types of cells they were using. And the reason I really loved the interview that bearded Tesla guy did is it showcases how much planning and thought is actually going into this design from the engineering team and that included the adoption of new cell sizes which we have yet to see come out on the market yet. Another great channel Aptera Owners Club asked for clarification from the company because in this interview Chris Anthony starts mentioning that on their launch edition vehicle with the 400 mile range they're going to be using 2170 cells. Not really anything special. Tesla's been using those for years and a lot of other EV companies are using 20 170s as well. They've been around all the Model 3s and Ys that are not lithium iron phosphate or 4680 are basically 2170. It's like the go-to, probably most energy dense cylindrical cell on the market right now. Rivian and Lucid use them as well. But Chris, when he starts talking about the 600 mile range Aptera in the future, starts mentioning that they plan to use a 2190 cell. So basically the same diameter as the 2170 but a little bit taller. And then he goes on to say that the 1000 mile range Aptera will be rocking a 2120 millimeter cell. So these things are just sticking the same size with diameter, but getting taller. And of course, a lot of people are probably like, why do you need the cell to just get taller? Why not do what Tesla's doing with the 4680 design? Well, it's very likely because of supply chain simplicity. Basically, a lot of the cell connectors, a lot of the battery management systems, and a lot of the fundamental pack design templates that go with don't have to be changed too much if all you're changing is the height of the cell. Yes, you have to accommodate for a taller battery pack, but again, we're talking about 90 millimeters instead of 70 or 120 millimeters. These are not going to be like substantially larger cells, but they can hold far more energy than the traditional 2170 cell can, and they can still have a battery pack that reuses a lot of the same designs and parts because they're optimized for that 21 millimeter diameter on the top and bottom. Chris said that this was in thanks to Sandy Monroe encouraging them to not design a brand new pack for every single single vehicle model, just tweak the pack a little bit to accommodate for a slightly taller cell. And the statement that Aptera gave to the Aptera Owners Club is that these cells are not on the market right now. They haven't really officially been announced by any cell manufacturers, but they are in talk with those supply chains right now, and they do plan on unveiling those and perhaps even bringing those to other electric vehicles in the future. So Aptera might not be the only company utilizing these different cell sizes. But I like hearing how specific they are. Like, they're not just saying, oh yeah, a thousand mile range, 600 mile range. He rightfully, as a CEO should, has the battery pack sizes memorized. So he said the 250 mile range Aptera would have about a 27 kilowatt hour pack. The launch edition, the 400 mile range will have a 45 kilowatt hour pack. Then the 600 mile range would have a 62 kilowatt hour pack. And then the 1000 mile range would have a 106 kilowatt hour pack. So yeah, an Aptera with a battery pack technically bigger than the batteries of what's in the Model S or X, which is pretty nutty to think about. But what's encouraging about those pack sizes to me is that it builds in a little bit of margin for error. So I know a lot of people are concerned about the Aptera. You know, you leave it out in the sun all the time. It's going to use more energy trying to keep the cabin cool. And there's just frankly a lot of people out there that don't really believe or subscribe to the idea that they can get 10 miles per kilowatt hour. That's kind of the rough average they're estimating for the whole lineup. But the truth is with those battery pack sizes they're currently targeting for their future models, they don't actually have to hit 10 miles a kilowatt hour to reach their range figures. So like if they were getting 10 miles per kilowatt hour, a 27 kilowatt hour pack would actually take them 270 miles, not 250. And a 62 kilowatt hour pack would take you 620 miles, a little bit more than 600. And then yeah, this is, I don't think what's actually going to happen, but technically if we're referring to 10 miles per kilowatt hour on a 106 kilowatt hour pack, that would take you 1,060 miles. So I feel like Aptera is actually being safe by building in a little bit of buffer with 
these battery packs. Maybe that's just on the front and top end to prevent it from being top charged or drained until it's completely dead, but still, like, if you have the understanding that at highway speed, your aerodynamic shape is affecting your energy consumption more than your powertrain is, and the Aptera has by far the most aerodynamic shape of any vehicle on the market, that should mean that with the 45 kilowatt hour battery pack they're targeting for the launch edition model, the Aptera should get 450 miles of range with a 45 kilowatt hour pack. That's in best case scenarios getting 10 miles a kilowatt hour, but I think it's smart of them to build in that buffer so that, okay, maybe you just get 8 or 9 miles a kilowatt hour and you still get those promised range figures. So I'm so thankful that Aptera is working in this like hibernation mode where, you know, they're kind of waiting on the big investors in the ATVM loan, but they're not standing still and it's clear that the engineering team is working on how to overcome some of these challenges with the different range options and how to reduce parts, how to reduce complexity, and basically figure out a way to make a 1,000 mile range all electric vehicle that costs less than $50,000. You know, right now it feels like all of the EVs that can exceed 400 or 500 miles range, they all have to cost 80, 90, or $100,000, and the Aptera is cutting that in half just for the sake of, okay, you won't have a second row of passengers, but still, I feel like most people are driving just by themselves or with one other person in the car, so the Aptera covers that. And I am also very curious to learn more, like how the cooling system is going to work with a battery pack that's getting that tall because Aptera plans on cooling their cells from the top and bottom, but maybe, I don't know, their powertrain is not that power hungry because it's such an efficient vehicle that maybe the battery pack never really overheats all that much, so you don't need to have such an aggressive cooling system in place. I don't know. Let me know what you guys are curious about when it comes to these higher range options in these new unreleased cells that haven't come out yet. I'm excited to figure out which cell suppliers they're talking with that plan on making these and if those 2190s or 21120s are going to be available in other electric vehicles in the future. All that good stuff, let me know what you're thinking down below and thank you to everybody supporting this channel directly. Seriously, helps us out a ton as does just watching these videos. So thanks again. Have an excellent rest of your day.